thanks to all of you for being here today. I appreciate it. Um, it's clear that we have bipartisan interests in ensuring a free and open internet, and we all appreciate how essential it is to innovation and economic growth. Um, but, and I appreciate that there are very different views on how we get here. Um, I, I believe that it's critical for the FCC to implement strong enforceable rules that will protect consumers and make sure there are clear protections against blocking and discriminating on content. Um, Commissioner Wright, your testimony suggests you believe that the fears that the network discrimination by broadband providers could lead to um, competitive harm are unwarranted. And I'm not sure I agree with that, but can you please talk more about what you see as the potential you know, benefits or efficiencies that these type of contracts will create for consumers and how consumers are gonna actually see that? Sure, the, the idea of discriminatory, what we call vertical contracts, for example, between broadband providers and content providers, these types of contracts have been the focus of antitrust inquiries uh, and the economics literature for uh, a century. Uh, sometimes what they do when we have close relationships between uh, folks in different parts of the supply chain is align their incentives, more, uh, their incentives more closely to provide new types of services by combining, not by merger. Uh, but by contract. But specifically, a consumer today, what do you think that they're going to see um, by today in terms of benefits? When I hear from consumers, I feel I hear concerns about net neutrality and, and kind of violating the principles of net neutrality. I concer hear concerns about pricing. Um, what what are, when you say there are benefits? So, uh, for example, business models that charge, I mean, the heart of discrimination, uh, Business models that charge different prices to consumers can allow lower prices to disadvantaged consumer groups uh, for different types of services that might be charged for, for higher prices. That discrimination gives some people cause for concern, and I, under, I understand that concern. Uh, but it also provides, and I think, don't think that there's any debate in the economic literature about this, that it provides real benefits to consumers by facilitating the growth and entry of new products, new business models, sometimes differentially priced or differentially, des differentially designed, but those provide real, real benefits. So let me, um, you know, I, I guess I have a question for, for Professor Wu then. Um, did the regulation of the internet um, today prevent venture capitalists or others from investing in startups like Google and Yahoo, have we seen a lack of innovation? No, uh, we've had a, a net neutrality policy for the last 20 years, maybe 30, depending how you count. And we have had, during this period, the most astonishing uh, period of economic growth and development on, centered on the Internet uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that we've ever seen in telecommunications. And it has been a, uh, it has, uh, been a tide that has risen all boats. The telecommunications sector itself, cable and uh, telephone companies, are very profitable. And we've just had one great innovation after another. I've suggested that under the net neutrality policy, we've approached what economists uh, aspire to, which is a market with very few barriers to entry. And, and, and we are policy. de facto today have a kind of a net neutrality policy that's been in place that folks right. have been operating. I mean, I, I agree. Maybe not with, formally, I, but in some ways formally, but also informally. Yes, I'm going to agree with the sentiment if it's not broken, uh, uh, don't fix it. We have had net neutrality policy for the last 20 years, and it has been terrific. And this is no time to jettison it, jettison the FCC and turn to antitrust instead, which is unproven and uh, would likely lead to uh, uh, disappointing results as compared to a successful policy we've had for the last so 20 years. So doing that would be a change. That would um, be the change. A change would be moving to antitrust. The FCC oversight has been uh, terrific, both in terms of economic development um, uh, and innovation. Um, I also want, want to say that may be why um, we have a letter um, from over 100 internet companies, from large companies, startups, services, um, who wrote a letter to the FCC last month arguing that the Commission's rules should protect users and internet companies on both fixed and mobile platforms against blocking, um, discrimination, and paid prioritization. And um, Mr. Chair, I ask for unanimous consent to submit this letter for the record. Without objection, so ordered. Um, so um, that's a, an example of folks feeling like we have a competitive environment today where they've been able to thrive and innovate and wanted to make sure that we continue to maintain that. Um, so um, with that, Mr. Chair, I yield back. Thank you very much. We'll uh, now recognize Mr. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you for holding this hearing. 
Um, I think it is important that, that we examine the importance of the antitrust laws. Um, they can play in the discussion of the Internet and particularly net neutra neutrality debate. My first question is for uh, Mr. McDowell. Um, how would additional regulation impact small and mid-sized